is November and it's World Diabetes Month. An estimated 120,000 people out of a population of 1.3 million have been affected by diabetes. Diabetes is a metabolic disorder where the body is unable to maintain blood glucose levels between 70 to 100 mg per liter. There are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes, formerly known as juvenile diabetes, is a result from autoimmune destruction of the insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas. Type 2 diabetes is a non autoimmune disorder where the body either lacks or is resistant to insulin. This is normally associated with lifestyle choices. The newsroom staff has set out to investigate a small but supposedly knowledgeable student population of the University of the West Indies where there is a high number of fast food outlets. An in depth analysis of the data was carried out with questionnaires and interviews among students. We now go to Ariana Ramsrup, our data analyst, who has compiled the information gathered. Thank you, Jackie. In order to carry out this investigation, interviews, surveys, and questionnaires were set up in order to get the public response to their eating habits and ways in which this can lead to type 2 diabetes. Approximately 200 questionnaires were given out at random in order to obtain an unbiased consensus on what can be the main causes that can lead to this phenomenon. From the survey carried out, the total gender population was noted to be 53% and 47% for both the females and males respectively. This was therefore done in order to obtain a fair balance between the two in order to show a comparison on how differently diabetes can affect the both gender. From pre previous studies, it was known that the male species are more susceptible to type 2 diabetes due to the consequences of indolence and obesity, possibly due to the differences in insulin sensitivity and regional fat deposition than compared to women. It is known, however, that women are more likely to transmit type 2 diabetes to their offsprings. Age is known to play an important role. It is known that the risk of type 2 diabetes increases as one gets older, mainly over the age of 45. This is due to the fact that persons become more lenient in their lifestyles, hence they are known to exercise less, lose muscle mass, as well as gain more weight. However, type 2 diabetes are becoming more prominent in adolescents and younger adults. In the survey that was conducted, 58% of the participants were between the ages of 21 to 24, while 38% were between 18 to 20. The main purpose of this is to show how their lifestyle and everyday habits that occurs within the university can lead to an early onset of type 2 diabetes or even prediabetes. The main purpose of this survey is to determine how the consumption of fast foods can lead to a greater risk of type 2 diabetes within the UE population. From the survey, 36% of the participants were known to consume fast food at least once a week, while a staggering 26% consumed most of their meals half the time. 15% individuals were noted to eat all their meals while on campus, while only 5% did not consume any at all. From all the popular food outlets found in and about the UE campus, KFC was noted to be the go-to food for most individuals, having a 34% range among the students. Subway lagged behind by only having 16% of the surveyed population consuming this on a weekly basis, while Vegels and Gate Boys Barbecue were not that far behind with 13 and 10% preference respectively. The remaining 27% preference was split unevenly between Peter Pitt doubles, marios, and other small establishments. When asking the reasons for such high levels of fast food consumption, the consensus were basically divided into three top choices. These being convenience, quality, and taste, all having a percent ranking of 28, 24, and 24 respectively. Most people said that through the hustle of managing classes, studying, and socializing, these were the main reasons why they decide on purchasing fast food so regularly on a weekly basis, as well as the fact that there was no hassle in preparation of food since most of it were already made. In order to control the risk of diabetes, the question was posed to the participants on how often they exercise for the week. 39% of the surveyed population said 2-4 to four days a week, while 34% admitted to not exercising regularly at all. 18% had set up exercise at least one time for the week, while the lowest 9% of the population have been 
said to exercise five to seven days for the week. This large portion of physically inactive individuals can therefore lead to an increase in the risk of becoming diabetic. This physical inactivity is known to make the muscles of the body less sensitive to the effects of insulin. Physical activity almost immediately improves the muscle sensitivity to insulin, making it easier to store sugar within the muscles rather than give it to arise within circulation. I now turn you over to our biochemist Gian, who would further explain the biochemistry behind the results obtained. Thank you, Ariana. In order to understand the role of insulin in the body, this short animation has been prepared. When food is ingested, it travels along the digestive tract, where it is broken down into its component nutrients in order to be absorbed into the bloodstream. One such nutrient is glucose, a simple sugar. Glucose gets absorbed by the stomach and intestines and then enters the bloodstream. It travels through the circulation to all body cells. Once absorbed into the bloodstream, glucose circulates, causing the blood sugar level to rise. An increased level of blood sugar sends a signal to the pancreatic beta cells, which respond by secreting the hormone insulin into the circulation. Insulin is necessary for glucose to reach and be used by several important target tissues throughout the body. These include the liver, muscle, and adipose tissue. Insulin is necessary to keep blood glucose levels stable in the body. Glucose enters the cell through a process called facilitated diffusion. Digestion of this food begins in the stomach and continues in the small intestine. Carbohydrates such as glucose are absorbed directly into the blood. This increases the blood glucose level. This increase triggers an endocrine response of the beta cells of the alpha-longarans in the pancreas to produce the polypeptide hormone insulin to match the amount of glucose in the blood. The insulin is circulated in the blood along with the glucose in order to stimulate the uptake of glucose by liver, muscle, and adipose tissue cells. These insulin receptors are transmembrane protein structures embedded in the cell membrane. These insulin receptors are tetrameric comprising of two alpha and two beta subunits held together by disulfide bonds. The binding of insulin to these receptors results in a conformational change which triggers the movement of insulin-dependent glucose transporter, GLUT4, to the surface of adipose and muscle tissue cells, which increases the amounts of glucose taken up by these cells. In type 2 diabetes, either the body is not producing enough insulin in order to regulate the blood glucose levels, or the insulin receptors no longer respond or recognize the insulin in the body. This is termed insulin resistance. The cells appear to be starving due to insufficient glucose in the cytosol, which results in gluconeogenesis occurring in the liver, which serves to further increase the amount of glucose in the blood. This is called hyperglycemia and leads to a wide range of metabolic complications. In order to rid the body of excess sugar, the kidneys move to filter the glucose out and pass it as urine. Now I would like to introduce the viewers to the idea of the glycemic index. The glycemic index is a measure of the increase in blood glucose levels as a result of the amount of carbohydrates consumed when compared to eating pure glucose. The glycemic index values are determined experimentally 
by measuring blood glucose levels after a fixed amount of food is consumed when breaking an overnight fast. Based on the survey, we found that KFC was the most popular eatery on campus, snack bag being purchased the most. Here we can see that the total calorie count for a snack bag, which is two pieces of chicken and fries, can be as much as 900 calories. Based on a 1200 to a 2000 calorie count diet, this is a very significant amount. In addition to this, the total carbohydrate count was as much as 60 grams. This means that the blood glucose levels can increase significantly after consuming this meal. Another popular food item on campus was found to be a chillona donut at Rituals. The total calorie count of this was 1100, whereas the carbohydrate count was 159 grams. This means that the body will have to This means that the body will have to secrete a very large amount of insulin in order to cope with this high increase in blood glucose levels. Finally, it was found that the number 4 combo at Gate Boys had the highest total calorie count of all the foods examined in the survey, with a total of 125 calories with 113 grams of carbohydrates. This still would result in a very drastic increase in insulin levels in the blood. It is important to note who are at risk for type 2 diabetes. The more fatty tissue in the body, the more resistant the cells become to insulin. You do not have to be overweight in order to develop type 2 diabetes. However, constant fast food consumption can result in very high blood glucose levels which can result in type 2 diabetes. Secondly, the risk of type 2 diabetes increases when fat is stored primarily in the abdomen as opposed to areas such as on the hips and thighs. Thirdly, the lack of exercise increases the risk of diabetes. The survey found that 52% of respondents exercise one day or less per week. One should know that physical activity helps control weight by using up glucose and making cells more sensitive to insulin. Family history and race both seem to be linked to an increased risk of developing diabetes. One factor that should be noted by all university students is the fact that age is linked to an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes. It has also been noted that there is a dramatic increase in type 2 diabetes among children, adolescents and young adults. These are some of the signs to look out for if you suspect you may have type 2 diabetes. If there's an increase in hunger, numbness in your hands and feet, frequent urination, blurry vision. If you are always tired, you have wounds that do not heal, there's an increase in thirst and unexplained weight loss. Now we go over to our fitness specialist, Amelia, in order to learn of ways to prevent diabetes type 2. Thank you, Jian. When it comes to dealing with diabetes, the best method is prevention. There are various do's and don'ts when it comes to this. Do maintain a healthy, balanced diet by following either the food pyramid or the Caribbean 6 food groups. Don't consume excessive amounts of sugar or salt in your daily diet. Do drink 2 litres of water per day to maintain the body's water content and prevent water retention. Do take a daily complex multivitamin. Don't consume excessive amounts of alcohol as this can lead to weight gain. Don't smoke or cut down on smoking as this threatens the body's cardiovascular health. Do maintain a healthy body weight to maintain a healthy BMI and therefore prevent the risk of diabetes. Do visit a doctor regularly for checkups to ensure the body is in a stable, healthy state. Do exercise regularly. The weekly recommendations for physical activity are 75 to 150 minutes of moderate to intense aerobic activity and two days of muscle strengthening exercises. And at the end of the day, do get 6 to 8 hours of sleep to maintain a healthy sleep cycle to allow the body to rest and recover from the daily activities as well as to balance the caloric requirements of the body.
Ride at TSC around two to three times a week and because of this thing. Okay. Well, I post the mint pool health, negative side effects on the health. But with regards to me, my metabolic rate is very high. I'm also skinny. But yet I exercise regularly, so I don't think it will affect me that much in the future. Well, we might have an From this investigation, we can conclude that some action must be taken to prevent early onset of diabetes in our younger population. According to our investigation, the students didn't suggest healthy alternatives, therefore some proactive changes must occur. One recommendation is that the university implements a program to educate and encourage students to be more active. This can be done by making one extracurricular activity compulsory per semester. Also, by reevaluating the food options available on campus, we can provide healthier and more organic options. Therefore, by doing this, students are able to balance their physical activities with their diet. This is Jackie Wong. Thank you for tuning in.